Hey everyone, welcome back to Critical Infinite, and this is part 3 of Aiming in Halo. Today I want to talk at length about reticles, bullet magnetism, and how the core mechanics of Halo shooting works. Bullet magnetism is a staple in many shooters, and you probably have a good understanding of it already. Just know that the Halo engine calls it auto-aim. I'll be using these terms almost interchangeably. Let's start from the beginning at Combat Evolved. Have you ever realized how weird CE is? How the meta is literally just a bunch of cyborgs with pistols shooting at each other? Halo's competitive multiplayer has evolved quite a bit since CE, but we need to stop back in 2001 to see how CE laid the groundwork for the gunplay that would carry the series forward. I mean, yeah, it's a 50 caliber explosive round, but wouldn't a longer barrel and stock make sense? It just looks weird that Master Chief's preferred weapon is the pistol given the options. Apparently Bungie felt the same way because in every cutscene, the Master Chief is using the assault rifle, so I actually think Bungie wasn't expecting the pistol to succeed and dominate the meta the way it did. That is to say, I think the preeminence of the Magnum was an accident. The Halo 1 pistol single-handedly and unintentionally created the precision weapon meta that 3 for 3 has been trying to thwart since Halo 4. I really think that during the development of Halo CE, Bungie intended each weapon to be unique but equal. However, the first proto-precision weapon was so universally effective that Bungie had to adjust its design philosophy for Halo 2. Remember how I said the Magnum could benefit from a longer barrel and stock? Well, Halo 2 rectifies this and formalizes precision weapons within the Halo formula. The battle rifle is so much the spiritual successor to the original Magnum that in the Halo 2 Alpha, it straight up uses the same UI and fires in single shot. Even before the infamous E3 demo, the battle rifle was exclusively semi-automatic. Here's an excerpt from the Ventral Vatum's Halo 2 cut content restoration mod. It featured a 12 round magazine, fired at a rate of 4.5 rounds per second when spamming the trigger, was capable of carrying 144 rounds of reserve ammo, and each singular round dished out 15 points of damage compared to the final game's 6, which when factoring in the 3 round burst, comes out to 18 points of damage for each trigger pull. Halo 2 is the game that legitimized precision weapons as a concept. Halo 2 was the first game to be built around precision weapons and their inevitable meta as Bungie adapted to player behavior. So, naturally, some additions were made to make precision weapons more smooth and functional. Where other games give you a single point on the screen, or a general crosshair to indicate where you are aiming, Halo takes the best of both worlds. An entire section of the screen is taken as the reticle and treated evenly. If your reticle is over your target, ideally, you should land any shots assuming you're within red reticle range. You likely understand the basics of first person shooters, but what makes Halo different is its approach to how the UI and mechanics combine to make Halo singular among shooters. Compared to other games, Halo takes a larger portion of the screen and then gives it equal consideration. Bullet magnetism, or auto-aim, then ensures to make sure any targets within this screen space take the proper damage. These are the basics of how most weapons work in Halo. Obviously certain weapons like launchers and plasma projectiles work a little differently, but this is how nearly all of the main stable weapons work. Basically, the game is trying to create gameplay where the only thing that matters about your accuracy is reticle placement. Obviously, Bloom exists and some weapons have exceptionally low projectile velocities, but how and where you place your reticle is the most important part of aiming in Halo. The reticle is a promise to the player that their shots will land if their target is within these boundaries. Because of this, you will land shots even if your reticle isn't perfectly centered on target. Actually, you will still land your shots if your reticle is mostly off target. This is because again, Halo gives the player a larger portion of the screen and gives it equal consideration. Aim Assist takes a glass half full approach to reticle placement. 99% off target is still 1% on target, and Halo isn't supposed to start missing until you fall completely off target. Again, Halo ideally counts every pixel within the reticle as the center of the screen. This bit of game design is so precise that you can actually break it on MCC by changing your FOV. The UI or HUD doesn't scale on any of the games in the MCC. If you raise your FOV above the original, you run the risk of missing your shots even though your reticle appears on target. This is because changing your FOV changes the scale of the HUD relative to the game world and the aim assist doesn't scale the same way. This can be problematic because some Halo games launched with different FOVs and the default isn't always the original. Now in Halo Infinite, the reticle does scale to the FOV, so this isn't an issue here. Just know that if you choose to run a higher FOV in the MCC, you should pay more attention to Red Reticle because it never lies. Speaking of Halo Infinite, let's talk about 343 Halo and what it gets wrong. On the subject of reticles, 343 correctly identified that Bungie's reticles are less visible. The light blue HUD is easy to lose against a lot of Bungie skyboxes, so 343 changed its color. 
Customization options are likely coming soon. However, 343 overlooked that the reticle is supposed to be see-through. Bungie used such slight and minimal reticles because you're supposed to be able to see through them. Only once did Bungie design a reticle that wasn't quite see-through. The CE Sniper. The CE Sniper uses a single point of aim that the player uses to place over their target. In each successive game, the Sniper would use the signature tiny circle. If Bungie played Battlefield 3 and 4, they'd use the Cobra Sight every time because you're meant to be able to see your target through the reticle. Of Halo Infinite, many weapons break this principle. A single point of aim doesn't telegraph information to the player well because it doesn't show the limits of the game's magnetism. What gives Halo its signature feel is how it gives player a larger shape on the screen to aim accurately with. Thus, the larger the reticle, ideally the easier it is to land shots with. Or, the larger the weapon's spread. Conversely, the smaller the reticle is, the more precise you'll need to be. Halo Infinite gets this mostly correct. The Infinite Battle Rifle's reticle is smaller and generally does require more effort and attention from the player. However, many of Halo Infinite's weapons don't work properly because there is a disparity between the reticle and where the shots will go. The Stalker Rifle allows you to be completely off target and still land shots, while other weapons have decorative elements to their reticle. Basically, the Shock Rifle's outer ring serves no purpose. The inner dot is what counts. We all know that the shock rifle requires a lot of precision, but its reticle doesn't show that. Would a new player know how to use this weapon properly? The shock rifle, in my opinion, should have a reticle more like the beam rifle. The commando is in a class of its own. Like the shock rifle, half of this weapon's reticle is just useless HUD clutter. Because the reticle is so small, it can be particularly misleading because the game doesn't tell you that the outer ring is just for show. Remember how I said Bungie designed their reticles to be see-through? Well, what is this peephole? It's really difficult to discern what you're aiming at with this weapon. Honestly, it feels like it was ported over from a different game to me. The relationship between auto-aim and the reticle has been something that 343 has been missing for quite some time now. I barely played Halo 5, but several clips went viral showing how forgiving the sniper was. When bullet magnetism is leaking out of the reticle like this, it's a problem because that reticle is no longer an accurate and honest representation of which shots will be on target or those that will miss. Yes, in Halo, you will land shots even when the center of your screen is far off target. This is by design, as long as that area is clearly outlined. When auto-aim no longer correlates precisely to the reticle, Players can no longer discern which shots are good from those which are bad. In Halo 5, it has to be asked, how many shots did you pass on because your reticle was off target, when in reality, bullet magnetism would have closed the distance for you? This issue persists into Halo Infinite. Let's talk a little about Red Reticle and why it exists. Halo gives a rather large portion of the screen that all counts equally while aiming. Naturally, as the distance from you and your target increases, the area that space represents also increases. This is simply how spherical geometry works. The area your reticle represents may be small up close, but over distance that area grows proportionally. It's kind of like the inverse square law. To ensure the player needs to remain accurate at range, the game introduces falloff and cutoff ranges to bullet magnetism. Without these limits, hip fire would be almost universally effective and accuracy at range would be optional. Basically, the further you got from your target, the easier it would be to aim because your reticle and bullet magnetism would represent a larger area in the game world. Hopefully, I have successfully demonstrated that much of the Halo feel comes from lots of bullet magnetism and how the game gives you more of the screen to aim with. Geometrically speaking, Halo is a game about placing circles over people's heads, and larger circles and smaller heads over distance generally make it easier. Red Reticle is the game putting all its cards on the table, giving the player all the information they need about the state of the game and their aim. The Halo formula is literally built on comparatively generous bullet magnetism. That is to say that auto-aim is foundational to this game. Without auto-aim, Halo is just Counter-Strike without the accuracy penalties for moving. Red Reticle is how the game communicates crucial info. Without it, players have to place their reticle over their target and loosely hope for the best. Basically, the game is saying anything within the reticle boundary will likely hit so long as the reticle is red. A red reticle means the auto-aim is working at full strength at your current range. Red reticle doesn't guarantee a hit, but the game is trying to get pretty close given that certain enemies have different hitboxes. But how is the game able to do this? Quite simply, by continuously calculating the trajectory of your shots. Essentially, the game knows where your shots will land before you fire them. 
Finally, there's one final aspect of Red Reticle I want to share with you. Ever hear the phrase, see a dot, take the shot? It first appeared in the ODST manual. This is the game telegraphing another feature, headshot telegraphing. It might not work that well because you can still land headshots without ever getting the dot, but on to the point. Once your target's head is fairly centered within your reticle, assuming you're within range, a small dot will appear in the middle of your reticle on most precision weapons. This is the game guaranteeing a headshot. In all my testing, I've never seen the red dot and not gotten the headshot, except when using modded weapons at ranges Bungie clearly never intended. Even still, I was able to rectify that by making further modifications to firing error and projectile properties. Anyways, assembly displays a secondary weapon flag labeled Weapon Can Headshot. Disabling this flag doesn't remove headshot capability from the weapon, however. Actually, it seems to disable headshot prioritization. Time to explain. Headshot prioritization is like a second frame of bullet magnetism directly atop the regular one. If we go back to 2001, we find that this red reticle dot isn't present and neither is headshot prioritization. Consequently, the aim assist doesn't distinguish a target's head from the rest of their body. This means it's easier to score headshots above your target's head than from below it, as the auto-aim won't adjust your shots when they're already on track to hit. In Halo CE, you won't score a headshot until the center of your reticle is squarely on your target's head. Even if your reticle is touching your target's chin, the auto-aim won't distinguish your target's head from the rest of their chest. I want to be clear, headshot prioritization and red reticle dot are not the same thing. They were introduced at the same time, however. Without headshot prioritization, there is less perceived aim assist toward the target's chin, as the auto-aim will curve bullets down to the head but not up from the chest. Halo 2 immediately rectified this issue when it introduced headshot prioritization alongside the red reticle dot. Halo Infinite seems to be missing both. Okay, remember how I said at the beginning of this video Halo 2 is the game that ultimately formalized precision weapons? Look, Halo 5 scrapped the red reticle dot. And while I didn't really play Halo 5, from this developer footage, it looks like headshot prioritization was still functional. If you played Halo 5, let me know if I'm right. The headshot dot honestly isn't that much of an issue to me. Like I said, you will score plenty of headshots without it. Many players likely didn't even notice it. However, headshot prioritization is one of the defining features of precision weapons. Without it, precision weapons will feel anemic. In order to demonstrate headshot prioritization and Halo Infinite's lack of it, Here's our test. Assembly uses degree values to describe Legacy Halo's auto-aim, and it looks like Infinite uses radians, although the in-game results don't always match the tag viewer's description. So let's take a ridiculous amount of aim assist, 30 degrees, that's basically an aimbot. In radians, this value translates to 0.524, rounded. Let's compare Halo Reach's DMR to Infinite's Commando. Observe how in reach, despite the fact that I'm aiming at the floor, the shot bounces straight into my target's head, ignoring the whole body. This is headshot prioritization. The auto-aim simply prioritizes headshots over body shots. In infinite, we see the opposite. The bullet takes the path of least resistance toward the leg of the closest target. Halo Infinite's aim assist doesn't discern headshots from body shots, it's all the same. And as a result, just like in CE, you will experience more reliable headshots when overshooting than undershooting. So, what do you get when you remove foundational features that have been in the game since Halo 2, delete Red Reticle for PC players entirely, and have reticles that don't fairly telegraph the weapon's spread or bullet magnetism? Well, we get Halo Infinite. In all seriousness, a common complaint of Halo Infinite is that aim assist stops working upon breaking an opponent's shield. This could be a technical glitch, though I've not personally experienced it. Might I suggest that a possible part of what players are experiencing is this lack of headshot prioritization? Let me know in the comments below. Halo without headshot prioritization disproportionately hurts mouse and keyboard users, and given the nature of Red Reticle and how important it is, I think it needs to be reinstated. I've talked about controller a lot on this channel, and I feel like I've left MNK players behind a little, and I apologize for that. As for now, I'd simply ask that you like the video, comment your thoughts below, and subscribe to the channel if you think what I'm doing here has any value to it. 
As for what took this video so long, well, quite simply, it hasn't been easy being a Halo fan these days, so motivation has definitely been a large part of it. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day. Hope to see you in the next one. Hello? What the fuck was that? How many blanks did I just get? What? That gun's fucking dog shit, bro. Commando, I will never pick up. Ever. Gun his ass.